What is going on everyone? We're up here at Polichek Performance. Going to be doing a bunch of work on the new winter beater today, but I figured I would just do a video on the WeatherTech mat fitment once I get them in and vacuumed out. And then I'll do a kind of overview of the G8 since it's been in the shop here for the last several months getting worked on. Kind of go over what I've done to it this season and what future plans are. So let's go get the beater pulled up and then uh, we'll go over the G8 here. Ah. What are you doing? Come on. So I just got the remote start installed. This is a 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee, also known as the WJ. I've had one before. It was the 47 V8. This one is the inline 6.4 liter. Got it from a buddy of mine for like 800 bucks. I already replaced the battery, got the remote start put in because in Minnesota, yeah, you want remote start in the winter time, especially when you don't have heated seats or wheel. Gonna throw new tires on it. And then, of course, when I picked it up for my buddy, brake line blue. So we've got a new set of stainless steel brake lines, all pre-bent, back at the shop to throw on. Ah, I forgot I need a new passenger mirror also. 225K, but hey, four wheel drive. What? What is this? What is? Oh boy. <laughs> like I said, 800 bucks. Beater with a heater, needs a little work, but hey, as long as it has heat and the remote start, four wheel drive for the snow, we're good, man. Keep the uh, 2021 Grand Cherokee nice and mint, keep the miles off, keep the salt away from that thing so it doesn't rust, but this thing take the abuse. Are we in yet, Hem? So anyways, I've got the stainless pre-bent brake line set here. I've got six struts for the glass, the hatch, and the hood. And then this Amazon air horn that I definitely needed, of course. It was like 17 bucks. So I'm gonna be doing all that work today, but let's get on to the weather techs after I get this vacuumed out and we'll go over the rest of the G8. All right, well, it's not perfect because all I have is this shop vac handy and this is the only end I have for it. I don't have like a chisel end or like a broad end. So it's not perfect, but better than it was all vacuumed out. Now we can go ahead and install the weather techs. On the bottom of the mats, it shows the orientation in which it goes. As you see here, we have the front or the hood of the car, and this is showing a square at the back right position. So this is the passenger rear floor mat. All right, here we are. As with any mat, it's never 100% perfect. Along the back, pretty good. Small gap there. Sides, a little bit of bowing going on, but again, if you bend it the opposite direction or take a hair dryer to it, you could fix that. Fits well forward under the driver's seat. Same fitment over on this side. Again, just need to bend the sides out, let them relax. Sometimes they naturally go back after being out of the box for a while. And then here's the fronts. Instead of snapping onto the factory retainer cleats, they just kind of sit over it. So it does have a little bit of wiggle to it if that is a big deal to you. But uh, coming over here, pretty good fitment along the back. A little bit of a bow there. You can peel off the WeatherTech logo if you'd like. It's just adhesive on there, stick on. Uh, covers halfway up the dead pedal. I wish it went all the way, but you know, whatever. And then it covers most of the way up under the gas pedal and good side coverage. Same thing over here on the passenger side, good fitment around the back and along the sides. A Little bit of bowing here, it needs to relax a little bit. And if you wanted to nitpick, it could definitely go a little bit higher in the back here, probably like another two or three inches. But as long as you don't have any really, really tall people jamming their feet far up there, you should be good in most situations. All right, well that does it for the mats, obviously. Again, thanks again to DNA High Performance. I will post their link down in the video description if you wanna buy a set of these. Of course, you can buy them anywhere. I choose to support them just because they're a channel sponsor of Alex Flores, which I watch a lot of his live videos, find him entertaining, and I like to support like-minded people. So that's who I ordered from. They ship pretty quickly, very good about contacting you if need be. So highly recommend so far from the two orders that I've put through. And they do carry a plethora of parts for plenty of different cars. I think they primarily focus on Mustang stuff, but 
because they carry WeatherTech mats for a Mustang. They also have WeatherTech mats for a G8. So there's kind of loopholes there. They can get things for your car as long as it's from a manufacturer that they sell. So, and speaking of Alex Flores, I suggest if you don't have thin skin and you like good entertainment and you want knowledge, real knowledge on uh, the Coyote Mustang 5.0 platform, go check him out on YouTube. Tons and tons of info on the Coyote platform. He works for Lund Racing, Lund Tuning, and he is gonna just love all the BMR suspension I have on this car. Although to be fair, when it comes to the G8, just about the only choice you have is BMR and Super Pro. So that's the combination of stuff we've got. Such is life. Now, let's get on to where we're at with the G8 so far because there's quite a list, but this is as far as it's going to come in. I'm sorry if it's picking up wind noise, guys. There's a little bit, hope it's not too bad, but um, this is the final stage it's going to get to this season before it gets put away for winter. So there's a lot to go through. It's filthy, but we're still gonna go over it and cover everything. Okay, so first things first, gloss black hood vents. They're just OE replicas painted gloss black from G8 only. Previous owner to me painted the kidney grills and the surrounds gloss black. So I didn't touch that. I'll probably repaint them. I would like to repaint these gloss black again and then perhaps get carbon fiber trim. We'll see. These I added, I peeled the faded chrome and pink factory ones off, did the matte black. I wanted to do the carbon fiber, but they were out of stock. Again, G8 only. A lot of these parts are available other places, but I have a G8 only account and you get points that you can use back towards paying for stuff so i bought a lot of stuff through there matching rear logo to go with that next year is going to be about cosmetics because there's a crater you can see my bulb there through the tail light housing so that's nice all my lights factory lights are shot so it'll be headlights tail lights trims accents all that stuff next year ebay for the front markers and the side blinkers so they're just obviously smoked those ones blink, they don't have a constant running. These ones are constant running, they don't blink. And then there's my faded crappy stock headlights that need to get replaced, probably do fog lights as well. And I would like to paint the lower grill gloss black to match the kidney grills. Another cosmetic that needs to be addressed terribly is this. Going down the road, every time you close the door, man, that rattle gets annoying. <laughs> Also got to repaint these terribly faded wiper arms. Would like to wrap the roof gloss black and most likely get a GXP rear diffuser, possibly a carbon fiber one. And then I have some Camaro. These are reflectors, but I have some lights that are smoked and they're gonna light up with my tail lights I can wire in up here that I'll put in once I get that new diffuser. As far as the interior goes so far, bone stock, Rip seat and all, typical G8 stuff. Steering wheel coming apart. I would like to get a carbon fiber wheel, maybe some dash accents, but all stock in here, just some WeatherTech floor mats. And I don't really plan on going crazy on the interior. Like I said, steering wheel. Uh, if I do a carbon wheel, I might replace these aluminum dash spears with carbon fiber ones. But other than that, the only thing I'm gonna add on the interior is gonna be gauges. So check under the hood here. Replaced the hood and trunk struts because those were all blown out. Red billet L76 oil fill cap just for dress up. Previous owner already had this. I believe it's a four inch, maybe four and a half, somewhere between four and four and a half inch intake. It's a Spectre, you know, O'Reilly's Walmart. It does the job for now, but eventually we're gonna go boost and I'm gonna wanna get something that probably drops down into the fender for a nice true cold air intake. Got the G8 only E85 sensor. You can see the wire ran here tied into the ECM. Previous owner, I don't think they torqued the harmonic balancer bolt properly because it came loose one day and the balancer walked off, shredded a belt and kaboom into my hood liner there. So that's sweet. I don't think they make those anymore. Rip. Replaced the stock balancer with a fluid damper. Then I pinned it two pins in there so it's ready for boost. If I decide to stay on a six rib, if I wanna go eight rib or so, then I'm gonna to have to go with the ATI. Uh, I got the Holden AC tensioner and pulley upgrade there. To keep that from happening again with ARP balancer bolt torqued two spec. 
even pulled the starter down and bolted up the flywheel tool to hold hold the engine and everything so uh, we've got new spark plug wires and heat protector boots stainless works long tube headers two inch primary to three inch collector and then that's also paired it's their full system it's paired with the g sport gesi high flow cats then three inch x pipe to stainless works resonator continuing back to their dual mufflers and then quad tips so it's full three inch with two mufflers a resonator two high flow cats I'll have to do some checking and see how much power these cats are good for. They may end up having to come off when I go boost, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Prior setup exhaust on this was Speed Engineering 1 and 7 eighths primary to 3 inch collectors, no cats, 3 inch X pipe to a random dual 3 inch in, 2 and a half inch dual out Magnaflow muffler, which connected to Corsa axle backs. I have videos on the stainless work system and the old setup if you want to compare. The stainless works is definitely a little bit quieter. Do also have a Mishimoto aluminum radiator ready to go in. My front bumper was cracked in the middle here when I got it and I didn't have a license plate and I didn't want to drill a hole into the front of the bumper so I said screw it. I got a Camaro Stow and Show plate mount. I just bolted it to the bottom, sandwiched another plate on top. It's got this little release pin. Just pull it off. Moving on, suspension was the main focus this year. The exhaust, the suspension, and the chassis stuff was planned. The harmonic balancer and the AC upgrade was not. So we've got Shockworks, premium coilovers, front and rear. It's sitting a little bit monster truck right now. I do need to adjust the height next year, but this year I was just in a huge rush. Uh, I only had a week. I got it all together. Had to get the ride height adjusted evenly around, have my buddy get my radials mounted and balanced, and then align it. So he just got it as close as possible, but you can see it's definitely got to come down a little bit. We'll touch on that next year. Can't see it from here, but got the Petters steering rack bushing, front white line sway bar with white line sway bar end links, rear white line sway bar with white line sway bar end links. Already had a Camaro 327 limited slip rear end in it. When I got it, they come stock with a 292 open diff. As far as transmission goes, previous owner allegedly replaced the pump. Not sure why. Uh, of course, the engine and transmission have a tune. I did the deep Camaro pan upgrade with the wide mouth filter. And then those of you that know, the G8s don't have a transmission dipstick, so I added the low car one and then overfilled by one quart per tuner and several other G8 enthusiasts advice apparently the 6l80 likes to be fuller on the transmission oil eventually eventually after boost i would like to manual swap this car but for now i uh, when i do the steering wheel upgrade i'm just going to do the paddle shifters because it beats nothing it beats just the slap stick so i'll do that for the time being there stock drive shaft but i got brand new drive shaft couplers. If you don't know what those are, it's basically like the equivalent to a rag joint on an old steer shaft. Thick, hard piece of polyurethane or rubber basically with metal inserts, so it kind of absorbs vibrations. Also added a JXB carrier bearing support. And although the car already came with the Camaro rear end, the whole cradle came down to do the suspension in the back. So I replaced the differential bushings with one Durlin and two poly BMR bushings. Here you can get a better view of the sway bar and the exhaust. Also coated and, or sanded and coated the cradle while it was down. Uh, all the suspension parts are either BMR in this hammer tone color or Super Pro in gloss black. So all the rear stuff here, kind of hard to see, but this aluminum upper arm, that's actually a Chevy SS. Upper control arm, lower is BMR with poly bushing. These are non-adjustable arms. Also BMR trailing and tow arms. Again, poly bushings. That's of course on both sides. Still running stock axle shafts. Got the Brembo CTS-V four piston front and rear brake upgrade. That's from ZZ Performance. Calipers, rotors, brackets, bolts, all that. Along with Goodridge stainless steel brake lines from G8 only. 
All right, here you can see the front tow arm, lower control arm there, front sway bar, sway bar end link. Again, all white line and super pro, and then did new inner and outer tie rod ends. OEM when possible, I think the outers, I had to go cheap, like Amazon or something, because they're the only ones that could actually get them in a reasonable amount of time. So we'll see how those hold up. The wheels are Forge Star D5, 18 by eight in the front, 17 by 10 in the rear. So the stock size tires on these, there's a couple different wheel size options, but this one came with 19, so it came with 245, 40, 19. So that's a 26.7 inch tall tire. Stepped it up a size in the front because the rears are quite a bit bigger. So the rears are a 305, 45, 17, which basically comes out to like a 12 wide by just under 28 inch tall. It actually measures at like 27 and a half, 27 and three quarter. So that's why I stepped it up a little bit in the front so it matched a little bit better and these are a 255 45 18 these are the michelin pilot sport 4s and the rears are the mickey thompson et street ss i'll probably eventually switch to the et street r after boost but for now these are fine and uh yeah we'll get you a, a shot here kind of how it sits get out of the way <laughs> i want my picture taken down Uh, yeah. So that kind of leads into the last thing, which is I need to get my fenders rolled because before I did the suspension upgrades this year with these tires, it uh, did a little bit of self-clearance of its own. And we're trying to avoid that in the future because it tears up the tire pretty good. And those aren't exactly cheap. Car also had what seems to be 5% tint all the way around when I got it. I do have the Mishimoto silicone upper and lower radiator hoses to go in once I do the radiator, as well as an Air Pro HVAC and radio upgrade kit that I'll get to eventually, probably next season. Oh yes, also has a Summit Racing 3200 stall converter in it and engine work done by the previous owner was DOD Delete with the BTR Red Hot Cam, which for a short time was the same as the BTR Stage 2 Version 2, but now they've changed it again, along with 660 lift dual stainless BTR springs, the CHE or CHI, trunnion upgrade but my tuner says that they often see that the brass is worn out in those pivot bushings so i'll probably switch out for the all steel btr ones here next season and then when the heads were off they installed ls3 intake valves which the only real difference between stock and the ls3 ones are the ls3 are hollow sodium filled so they're lighter for a little bit higher rpm and don't get as hot it's got a melling high volume high pressure oil pump King main bearings, cam bearings, and connecting rod bearings with LS9 head gaskets and ARP head studs. And supposedly the rings are gapped, so I would like to yank the engine to sand and repaint the front cradle next season. And then since I had issues with uh, the harmonic balancer bolt falling off, I would like to go through and retorque everything on the bottom end, replace those trunnions on the top side. Re just go ahead and retorque everything so I have peace of mind. And then in theory, I should be good for some boost, 600 wheel at a minimum, up to 800 wheel on the very high side. So that should just about cover everything. Sorry about rambling. I know I covered more than what's done to it. Also covered future plans, but there you go. Spoilers. So yeah, next season pretty much is going to be lowering it a little bit more, getting the alignment dialed in, focusing on cosmetics, and possibly yanking the engine to repaint the front cradle and prep the engine 100% for boost the following season. So that is gonna do it for this video. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button, comment down below with any questions, subscribe for more videos like this, check out my other videos here on YouTube, and check me out on all my socials. As always, thanks for watching, have a great day.